This is a guide on what I think are the most important and useful shortcuts in Unreal Engine 5. Keyboard shortcuts can speed up your workflow considerably when it comes to complex apps like Photoshop or Premiere, and it's no different with the game engine. This video is jam-packed with information about different areas of the engine, and I'm going to move quickly, so feel free to come back to this video and use the bookmarks I've left in the description. Starting off with Project Navigation and the Blueprint Editor, pressing Ctrl P will search for any asset in your project. Once you're inside an editor, Ctrl B will highlight the current asset you're working on within the content browser. This also works within the scene outliner. Pressing Ctrl E on a selected asset within the scene outliner will bring up the editor for that asset. For a blueprint actor, it'll bring up the blueprint editor. And for a static mesh actor, it will bring up the static mesh editor. Pressing Alt-Shift-R will bring up the reference viewer for an asset. And this is a useful tool that shows you what in your project references this asset, as well as what other references are referenced by it. If you have multiple windows open in your editor, pressing Control tab will let you switch between them with this window here. And Control shift tab will open up that same window going backwards. So you can flick between windows like so. From a Blueprint Editor, pressing Control shift f will do a find all within your blueprints. So this will search for keywords within your function names, variables, and even your comments. If you've made a change to a blueprint, Pressing F7 will compile it using the keyboard. And if you have a bunch of unsaved changes, Control Shift S will do a save all. You can quickly copy paste different values by using the Shift right mouse button to copy and the Shift left mouse button to paste. To clean up nodes in your blueprint graph, you can highlight them and press Q to straighten all the wires automatically. But if you want more fine-grained control, you can use Shift W A S D to align nodes across a certain direction. So Shift W will align them towards the top, as you might expect. Shift A aligns along the left-hand side, Shift D along the right-hand side, and Shift S along the bottom edge. To quickly add a comment over some nodes, you can drag over and press C. This will just add a default comment. I find that the white color makes it hard to see the white wires and also reduces contrast. So I like to set my default color to black, which you can do in the editor preferences by searching for comment color. Now let's move on to the editor viewport and this is where things get a little more visual. You can create bookmarks within your scene with control one, control two, control three, etc., all the way up to zero. So 10 total slots, and you can flick through them by pressing the number keys themselves, so without control. This is useful for creating some saved views within your scene and coming back later to check on lighting changes, environment changes, etc. If you click on an actor and press F, it will focus onto that actor. We all know if you use the WASD QE while pressing the right click button, it will move you through the scene. But you can also hold right click and use C and Z to zoom in and out, which is useful for getting a close up view of an actor. If you're moving around your scene, you can also scroll the middle mouse wheel to speed up or slow down without having to go into the menu on the top right here. In order to remove gizmos, grids, and outlines from your scene, you can press the G key to toggle those. And if you're having some trouble selecting a transparent actor, you can press T to toggle transparent object selection. If you want to hide an actor from the viewport, you can press the H button. And to unhide all the hidden actors, press Control H. If you have a particle system in your scene and you want to reset it, you can press the slash key. And Shift slash will reset all particle systems. You can change the directional light in your scene by pressing Control L and then holding down Control and then you can move the mouse around to change the sun's position within your scene. 
To sidebar all tabs and just focus on the editor viewport, you can press F10. And if you want to go into full screen mode, you can press F11. Right clicking on an object and pressing snap view to object will snap your camera to that object's position. And you can also right click and snap object to view, which just set this camera to the same view as my viewport. And this is super handy for positioning cameras. Press Control Shift H to toggle FPS readouts for your scene. And if you have a bunch of on-screen messages here and you want to hide those, you can press Shift L. And if you have some big meshes in your scene and you want to take a look at how heavy they are, you can select them and then press Shift Alt A, which will bring up the Asset Auditor, which will show you how much disk space the asset's taking up, how many materials are on it, vertices, etc. We also have some nifty ways of selecting multiple actors for a given criteria. So if we select this wall here and press Shift E, it'll select all of the other static mesh actors in the scene that are using the same static mesh. So here, all of this geometry is using the same cube scaled in different ways, so they're all selected. We can also click on this blueprint here, this coin pickup, and press Control Shift A which selects all actors that are of the same class as the selected actor. So in this case, it's going to select all of the other BP coin actors. We can also do the same thing with this BP heal, or going back to that static mesh actor example, pressing Control Shift A selects all of the static mesh geometry in my scene. Now let's take a look at manipulating objects. So you have the standard W, E, and R shortcuts to switch between translation, rotation, and scale. You also have the square brackets, which will change the grid snap size setting. So this will be easier to see if we hide the ground here using H. So left square bracket decreases the size of that grid and right square bracket increases the size. Shift and the same bracket keys will increase and decrease the rotation snap size. And if you've increased the size of your snap grid and you want to re-snap the origin of an actor to the grid, you can press Control end So now it's snapped to this point here on the grid. If you want to group multiple actors together, you can shift click to select and press Control g So now they move as a group and also rotate as a group. You can press Shift-G to ungroup them and now they are independent again. If you want to snap an object to the ground, you can press end, which will snap it using the bottom surface. But if you have an object that is slightly overhanging some other geometry, like in this example here, where we have the cube overlapping against this larger gray cube, if we hold down end here, it'll snap only to this edge. But if we want to keep going and snap to the floor, we can tell Unreal to snap using the bottom center portion of the surface by pressing shift end. So now it's snapping the way we wanted it to. If we press alt end, it'll snap to the ground using the actor's pivot location. So because the pivot location of this cube is in the very center, the cube is now halfway through the floor. If we press alt middle click, we can temporarily set the pivot location of the actor to anywhere on the mesh. So here we can now rotate around this outer edge. And we can also combine this with our earlier shortcut of Alt end. So if I hold down Alt and middle mouse button and click again, and then press Alt end, you can now see that the actor is almost all the way through the floor because the pivot location is right here. If we hold down V and drag, we can snap the pivot of this actor to any point on the scene. So you can see that the blue corners on that gray box are highlighted with a little blue right now. And we can snap to that vertex perfectly. And we can also snap elsewhere on the scene by moving a little further out. So now it's getting snapped to this coin or this player start actor, or maybe this other cube in the background here. If we hold down Alt-V and then click and drag the middle mouse button, 
we can change the actor's pivot to any vertex in the scene, including the cube itself or any other point, such as this coin. And now when we rotate, we're rotating around the coin instead of around some point on the cube. If we reset and hold down Alt-V and then click and drag the middle mouse button again and get it onto a vertex on the cube, we can now combine this with our earlier technique of holding down V and dragging along the translation gizmo to perfectly snap this vertex with others in the scene. So now you can see that this cube is perfectly snapped to this corresponding vertex on the gray cube, and we can keep trying with other vertices. So these are all perfectly matched up, which is super useful if you're trying to align geometry in your scene. All right, that's it for this video. If you found this helpful, please give it a like. And if you know of any shortcuts that I should have included, drop them in a comment below and I'll pin them. I've got a lot more content planned for 2023, so subscribe and make sure you don't miss out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.